then we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. Happy June. <laughs> I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup, and before we begin, we have to congratulate Andy because oh. he was honored last night here in New York at the New York City Council annual Pride celebration. There he is with five of the six out LGBT New York City Council members. He gave a wonderful speech. Thank you very much. Uh, write to me at Andy Hum at AOL. I'll send it to you if you're really interested. <laughs> Uh, but we have a lot of news this week. Okay. And thank you. And okay. Thank you for being there. Thank you. Uh, the Stonewall Inn is now on track for New York City landmark status almost uh, 50 years after the rebellion. Uh, our guest, and we're really excited to have him, is Tommy Lanigan Schmidt, who will uh, tell us what the bar was like in the late 1960s and about his participation in the rebellion. I'm impressed he can remember what it was like in the 1960s. <laughs> in other news, Alabama may have come up with a new way to ban same-sex marriage no matter how the Supreme Court rules. I'm skeptical, but they think they've got it solved. Uh, the Pentagon is uh, moving to protect the rights of uh, LGB oh, excuse me, gay, lesbian, bisexual service members. Uh, in, well, this is a big breakthrough. Yeah. Well, even though we're allowed to serve, this is about protection. The battle over same-sex marriage in Australia is heating up. Bruce Jenner has come out as Caitlyn Jenner on the cover of Vanity Fair. You've probably heard about that, <laughs> yeah. but we'll add a few details. We saw this week at a screening the new HBO documentary Larry Kramer in Love and Anger coming uh, to HBO at the end of the month. We'll tell you about that. And I will review the new Jesse Eisenberg play. But our guest is, welcome, Tommy Lanigan Schmidt, who uh, is an artist, an activist, a participant in the Stonewall, Stonewall Rebellion, and a patron of the Stonewall Inn. Yes. Welcome. And we should say for the news, the news part of this, and we have a picture of the Stonewall back in the day, Stonewall is being city landmark by the, no, that's yeah. not the one. There it there is. There it is. City, as a city landmark, it's already on the register of national and uh, historic places, state historic places. The interior is not original, so it's not landmark, but this protects it from destroying the facade, essentially. Um, and the National Park Service is considering making the Stonewall and Christopher Park across the street a park service uh, spot. And they're going to have a community forum about that on June 23rd at the LGBT Center here at 7 p.m. So you can go to that discussion but, if you like. But Tommy, you were, you, were, you were not just a participant in the rebellion, you were a patron of the bar. So why don't you set the scene of what, and tell us how old you were then. I think we, ha well, uh, well, we'll get to that later. We have a floor plan of the bar, but tell us what it was like being in that bar. Well, and why was it significant? Okay, I was in my teens then, my late teens, and, and I hung out with a group of other, other gay teenagers that were, we were all runaways. And uh, that was the only place where we could go where we could dance with each other slowly. There was another bar called, um, the Tenth of Always, where like if you tried to dance slow, they would throw you out. That was like over on Third Street. People couldn't even touch each other in bars, basically. Uh, no, you couldn't. You, yeah. you you were you were always being watched. But we were we were. T I, t I talked to you before this. You you said that there was something revolutionary about the way you were able yes. to relate to each other. Yeah. What, what, what did you mean by that? Well, it was totally revolutionary because like none of the other bars, you could you couldn't touch, and then the stone wall like. Uh, allowed you to slow dance, which was the, were, were the exact same slow dances we did at like CYO, Catholic Youth Organization. <laughs> so, so like it was just a natural transition. Well, wait a minute, yeah. at CYO you had to have one hand in the air or something, right? Not always, I mean we, we were told to, but we sometimes we had both wrapped around. So what did that, what did that feel like? To be able to do that publicly, in a sense, for the first time. Okay, that uh, being able to dance with someone, same-sex dancing, uh, back then. Now, now it might be taken as a given, but back then that changed 
everything in the way you felt about yourself because you were having an affectionate moment with someone else. So you, you felt totally humanized in, in, in a complete way, in a way that uh, can't be even described. Do you think that that had anything to do with the fact that Stonewall Bar uh, in patrons rebelled? Oh yeah, that had every. That's it. The, the rebellion happens in the person before it happens in the street, and 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 we were we were young. We were like in our teens. So so like we did, we hadn't lived through all the prejudices that the older gay people. By older, I mean people like 25 back then. Uh, so, so like we were at the right moment at the right time just to be ourselves. Now we're going to talk about the rebellion, but let's. Do we have the uh, schematic of the bar, or what it looked like in those days? Because. What's being, uh, yes, what's being landmarked here, uh, you know, is the, is the facade, so that's the right-hand side of the picture, but... Uh, but it's the whole facade. The right? Yes, yeah. the current bar is only in the lower half there. Yeah. That's where the bar is now, and, and none of that is original to, uh, none of to the is. stone wall. Yeah. Uh, but it was a big place, wasn't it? It was a very big place. It was like, before that, any, any gay bar would be like kind of very small, and, and like a dance floor might be as, as big as a tiny kitchen. And, and this was like a, a very big dance floor. And in terms of landmarking, you've said, uh, why don't we go back to the original design and show people what it was like? And what was it like? Well, on the, on the picture, uh, the, the side that is now the, land, the nail salon was, was where, where the bigger room. And that was the room, upper side. Yeah, yeah, that was where most of the dancing was. And then the other room was actually a secondary room. But what, what, what was the atmosphere? I mean, this was a mafia bar, a dive bar, uh, watered down drinks, all that kind of stuff. But w how would you describe the atmosphere? And why do you want us to look, take another look at it and have it restored? Because it was a fascinating place. It was restored with like low overhead mafia plywood that they probably got falling off a truck somewhere uh, and painted black. And, and like it was like no budget, low budget. And then they had a jukebox that they got from somewhere. And, and uh, it was uh, the magnificence of it for me was that me and my friends could dance with each other. We, I never even bought a drink there for two reasons. One, I couldn't afford it, and the other reason was like I was kind of afraid to drink the water down. Because they, they filled the bottles. The, what was in the bottles wasn't what was the actual brand. No was, cover charge. Uh, no cover uh, charge. There well, was, uh, I just ran in whenever. I uh, all right. Well, and then, and then uh, all right. So talk about talk about your role, your role in the rebellion. How all that felt uh, for people who uh, don't oh, hear first, from. First, were there raids periodically on the bar before then? Well, there was a kind of thing like if if uh, there was in all the gay bars, and they would either blink a light or do something that would let you know the cops were showing up, and and then you would stop dancing, and and uh, so it was like something. It was not unexpected but at the same time it broke a certain rhythm and, and, and just because it was breaking with that. And when did it start to feel like something, when did people start to talk about we, we shouldn't take this anymore? Well that or was did always, they? okay, okay, My, among the street kids, which, which is what I was, uh, we never took it. I mean, it was it was like we we knew, we were we were runaways. So I mean, there were kids there whose mothers had thrown boiling water on them and scarred them from head to toe, uh, just because they were gay. And it was a bunch of desperate teenagers who who like uh, knew they could get murdered. We anyone could kill us anytime outside. So in there, so you have to see it in the relationship to what, the way we had to live outside and the way we lived in there. And in there, we felt totally safe. Uh, be, just because someone wasn't going to walk up to us and beat us over the head with a bat or kill you and throw you in the river. And, and so that makes a big difference. I mean, we, we were not mainstream gay people. We were what's called the lumpen proletariat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to, to use a heavy word. All right. So, so then June of 1969 rolls around. And uh, what made what happened in those nights different from what had happened before? What made that night different from all other nights was that we were, we were passing over into an, into a new world, and we made it happen. And we and because we were angry, we were very angry, and it was it was an anger that was not reflected upon. It was an impulsive anger at not being able to dance. It was it was totally a body thing, a total body thing. So did you feel connected to some of the other social movements of the day where there was a lot of protest in the street, the war, race, all oh, the yeah, women? Oh yeah, sure, because cause like in the street then, it was like, okay, there were the, the, everyone of the same age, there was the college kids, the kids that were good at organizing, they were, they were not the street kids, but we all interacted. 
So there was this continual, like, very, very alive, very rich feeling of, like, be just being gay and having it mean something. And, and none of the slogans had been formulated yet or anything, but it was, it was a more kind of visceral, spiritual feeling of being together as a group. And, and we totally rejected just about anyone that was over, like, 23 years old. <laughs> because the, it was like there was a cutoff point, like where the Mattachine people, we couldn't stand them. I mean, I get along with people back from that, them, from them now. Like, a pre-Stonewall group, mostly for discussion and a little bit of activism as well. Well, uh, uh, but we didn't even think about them having any meaningful existence because they were so conservative. I mean, they, they, were, they were like uh, always telling us to kind of be quiet and shut up. Okay. So take us to that first night. Were you there that first that, night? I was there. They, they, uh, generally, when I would go, there was a guy at the door. It had, it had like a little um, window they pulled open, and the guy was always on a power trip there. He would like not let you in, and you walked around, you came back. Like a speakeasy it was, it was a combination yeah. speakeasy, juke joint. It was all of those things combined. Every, every word you can think of to describe something kind of lawless and below the radar, the Stonewall was. It's Deeply romantic place. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it needs the best movies made about it. It, it includes everything in its madness. <laughs> and and uh, so, so that night, it was like, I didn't get in. But when I came back after not getting in, that was when something was starting. And it kind of escalated pretty quickly. And like, uh, what most pe people don't realize about riots is that most riots are a standoff. Mm. That you're facing the police and they're facing you and not much is happening. And then suddenly something happens and everything goes crazy. And, and that particular night, more and more and more and more and more people kept showing up. So it kept getting this kind of volume of people being there that, that uh, suddenly everyone was together. And, and because there were so many people there, people that normally would not be like doing anything were, were acting out and, and, and being angry, like people that you might think are very respectable, nice people were screaming or yelling and throwing things. And have we shown the picture, the famous picture by, one of the famous pictures by Fred McDara of uh, the group at, at, after Stonewall, which I, uh, that, that's you there? Yeah, on? I'm the one in the stripes, I'm the skinny guy in the stripes. Oh, but the most important thing in that picture is to look at the, the queen with the purse and to notice that this purse is the exact same size as a brick, because that's what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, who is that? That is, her name was Chris, and uh, I, uh, people have told me I'm the only person probably that's still alive mm. from wow. there. So, so, so in a sense, I, I, I'm only speaking because like, uh, they're not here to do it. So. And you're not that old. <laughs> 67 now, <laughs> so, so I'm pretty old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh, uh, well, and it went on for several nights, so... It's uh, impossible to say, because I, in my mind, it all kind of mushes together, so I only know how many nights it went on by what historians tell me. I mean, because I would just go, go back home, which was Lower East Side, like across town, and come back. So it all kind of mushes together into one big thing. And there have been other rebellions in the past uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the community, in California and, and elsewhere, where people had rebelled over some mistreatment. Uh, but this was the one that led to people organizing into the Gay Liberation Front and other organizations and r really kind of, you know, fomented everything. Did you, what, what did you do after Stonewall? After Stonewall, I, I pretty much stayed the same, ex except that the momentum of the organizations were happening because I, I knew people like Marty Robinson and all these different people because, okay, Marty was a carpenter. And, and, and so, like, the very fact that, I was a street kid and I would know someone that had a good job like that. I mean, made a big difference. So, that, so all this coming together of these different people w was like electrifying. But you didn't stay a street kid. No, you, no, you I didn't. You became an artist, I, probably were at the time. I was an artist already then, but yes. like, uh, but this, this whole air, uh, world around the Stonewall had a, had a lot to do with me being able to become an artist because like that gay world, like it was a very centralized ghetto world where we're like, I met curators and people through being there. I right, mean, you said that yeah. everybody had to come to these clubs. Yes. People like Henry Galtzaller, who Gansaler ended up being Gansaler commissioner of cultural affairs. Yes. They all went to these yeah. places. There were no elite places to go. Well, they, they actually, Henry loved going there, and, and, and his boyfriend Chris Scott went there, and, and Chris uh, you know, learned the newest dances there. And, and so it, it had this, like, 
it wasn't something you even thought about. People didn't say, oh, we're going there because it's fabulous. And it wasn't like some kind of like 80s or clubbish thing. It, it was something you, you went to because it was the only place. And then its realness was, was like just the fact that it was there. And the jukebox was so good. And you wrote Mother Stonewall. Yeah. Which is? Well, it's, we it's, have a picture it's, of that. It's a, it's a, sh a, sh a short little, I, I think of it as kind of a sermon. It's actually based on sermons <laughs> on the stone wall. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. you now have almost 50 years perspective on all this. To, can you locate the importance of uh, Stonewall in that 50 year span? Do you have any analysis or observations of where you think we are now? Or? Well, from a distance, I mean, it's, it's importance doesn't surprise me at this point. Back then, I had no idea that all of that, you know, when you're living as a teenager, it's just life. Right. And, and so, you know, knowing someone like Marty Robinson or Henry Gelsall, those are just people I knew. I didn't, I didn't think, wow, I'm meeting this person or that person. Mm -hmm. and, and, but in retrospect, I look back and I, and I think it's pretty awesome and amazing uh, that a person, I could be a runaway and meet people that actually helped and, and that I didn't die. Yeah. But you've been teaching uh, at the MF, uh, MFA program at the School of Visual Arts yeah, for almost for, a quarter of a century right, now. Uh -huh. uh, you had an exhibit at MoMA, PS1, yeah. which mm -hmm. we have a picture of, uh, uh, of that as well uh, that we can put up on the screen. There uh, it is. Yeah, it's a nice picture. And uh, anything you want to say particularly about your approach to art? Well, my approach to art is actually based on uh, drag queens. It's, it's, ba it's based on the, the, the aesthetic of, of like uh, something flickering that creates something attracting and attractive, but, but then will kind of like dissolve and yet maintain its position as art. I mean, it comes from the nighttime in the street and the, and the world of, of street queens back then. And that world is still pretty much the same with its aesthetics. So, so like, uh, it's that. It's, it's a street queen aesthetic. And the world sort of is still the same and yet radically different, uh, which is kind of astonishing. Well, it's, uh, I, I think everyone, especially the fundamentalist Christians, should thank God every night that we exist because we make their lives very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we're a big fundraiser for them. <laughs> well, we're glad that you were there, someone like you, and you were there at Stonewall. because and still uh, telling the stories. Uh, 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 terrific. And, uh, uh, and, and ju I just finally, I guess it was to say, how do you feel about the landmarking? I believe, I mean, I think it should be landmarked and that it, sh it, should, it should be like the Tenement Museum and have actors in there playing, uh, <laughs> dancing in there and everything. Have a regular night at the Stonewall with, with uh, dance, uh, people being the street well, kids. It's, it's like Williamsburg. Right, like Williamsburg. Or Plymouth Plantation. Exactly, like, like these all-American <laughs> places to fabulous go. That's a great idea. idea. Yeah, exactly yeah. like Williamsburg. They're talking about bringing yes. a museum to and, the city. And we could take some of the homeless kids now and, uh, yeah, and get give them a little Fantastic. Could, could yeah. like, uh, Are you evolve. listening to all this out there? Fabulous yeah. idea. Great idea. Thank you so much Thank for you, being Tommy. with us. Terrific. And come back anytime. Thank you. Happy Pride Month. You too. Yes. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Well, and we and we have a couple of other history uh, notes to yes. talk about. Uh, okay. uh, uh, Frank Kameny. We have a picture of him, uh, mm -hmm. another, a true gay pioneer from the 1950s. Um, uh, he uh, okay, we have, uh, he died oh, in, uh, in 2011 at the age of 86, but he's going to be inducted into the Labor Hall of Fame by the U.S. Department of Labor on June 23rd. Because he fought so hard to end workplace discrimination, he was fired by the federal government. He was an astronomer, and he sued, and he took it to the Supreme Court, and he lost, but he just was a relentless fighter. And Got the, very chummy with President Obama. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and so the Department of Labor, the federal government, is honoring him for his work. And the, in New York City, the Jackson Heights Queens Post Office is going to be named for Jean and Jules Manford. The founders of the Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. Do you think they can get that through the Republican Congress? Republican Congress. Oh, I guess yes, they it has must. To, they it's have a to, post yes, office. They have to read. The, it's being oh, introduced yeah, as yeah, a bill. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, we may have another fight on our hands. Okay. All right. Well, uh, all right. To the main news. Well, the biggest news, of course, this week was the coming out of Caitlyn Jenner, uh, specifically in that Vanity Fair 
cover shot in a uh, corset by a Annie bustier, Leibovitz. Yes, by uh, Annie Leibovitz. Two uh, day shoot. <laughs> Ten hour facial feminization <laughs> surgery. Uh, and you can see video of the shoot online. But the thing that keeps popping up is stories of people being shown the magazine and saying, uh, oh, she's pretty. Why are you showing me this? <laughs> and everybody goes, that's ah, Bruce Jenner. Now Caitlyn Jenner. Now Caitlyn Jenner. And she said if she had kept uh, uh, her secret, uh, she would have uh, blown up her life. Well, what she said is that uh, Bruce lived a life of having secrets and having to conceal things, and Caitlin doesn't have any secrets. I'm free. It's a story by Buzz uh, Bissington, Bissington, who wrote Friday Night Lights. He did the Vanity Fair interview. Eh, he's a little off base, but uh, it's okay. And uh, well, this is a huge cultural phenomenon. Enormous. And then the, the funny note this week was how Caitlin chose that name. Uh, and by the way, used C instead of the K that the rest of the Kardashians use. Uh, was that on purpose, especially since she wants to be known as Kate. The title of the E! series coming up in July is, uh, wait, I am Kate, C-A-I-T. But <laughs> the story is that she sat around uh, with an assistant at, watching beauty pageants and making notes of all the contestants' names and then picking one for her name, Caitlin. But what strikes me about this and how gorgeous and dreamy that cover shot is and all the pictures inside, uh, you know, they are the most glamorous movie star kind of pictures. Rita Hayworth, uh, Grace Kelly kinds of pictures. Uh, uh, Jessica Lange has also been mentioned. Is that this clearly is a dream come true. This mm -hmm. is the fantasy she's had mm -hmm. for 50, 60 years. And uh, it's amazing. I fantasize that she might leave the Republican Party. <laughs> I fantasize that she might go to Albany, New York and talk to Republican state senators about passing the Gender Identity and Expression Non-Discrimination Act. All her fellow Republican senators that who are blocking it. was passed by the Assembly. All right. Uh, somebody else who may want to change his name is Denny Hastert. Uh, he, uh, this was the former Speaker of the House of Representatives uh, and uh, caught up in a scandal because he was paying uh, millions of dollars uh, to someone he uh, allegedly molested when he was a high school wrestling coach. Um, he had a very anti-gay record in the Congress. Zero uh, rating from HRC. Uh, so Voted uh, for the uh, Federal Marriage Amendment I in mean, 2004. He Evangelical got, Christian. He got caught because, you know, you can't just keep taking money out of the bank and not accounting for it. You know, you do all things like gift tax on things when you start giving it away. Well, you're not uh, allowed to take more than 10000 10, or more out of the bank without the bank right. reporting it to the federal government. And he was taking larger sums out at first in cash, and uh, then someone tipped him to the fact that he those uh, withdrawals were being reported and so he started taking under 10,000 out but the FBI came to talk to him because they figured maybe he's being blackmailed and he lied to them. I don't trust the banking system. <laughs> yes, I'm putting it all in the uh, mattress. Well, <laughs> we're laughing. It's it's and, and if he weren't such a bad guy, I'd say it's very sad. Yeah. Uh, but it is very it, you know, it is it is pretty terrible. I mean, Wheaton College has already taken their name off one of the buildings named for him. Yeah, well, Wheaton uh, College is a very right-wing uh, Christian college it's one of the they don't forgive the top, him uh, they don't forgive any of their lgbt students they've been very anti-gay there's a, a friend of mine who went there made a movie about it uh, a documentary they are they are well, in the elite of the anti-gay christian colleges no. uh denny hastert there had been some rumors about him over the years for instance it was pointed out that he was living with his chief of staff uh, for years in on Capitol Hill and that he uh, the chief of staff had years ago when Denny was the uh, speaker of the house had been told about Mark Foley by his chief of staff and they basically did nothing about it at first and the sense is that now that perhaps that was because they were afraid of Denny being outed mm -hmm. So uh, it gets very complicated. I saw him but. pop out of a car in New York once and grabbed his hand and said, Welcome to New York, Mr. Speaker. And he said, Oh, thank you. I said, What are you going to do something about gay rights down there? And he just 
Evidently, you missed the Ran big away. question. Uh, but my favorite moment Sorry. in the coverage, CBS Evening News does the story, and they have a soundbite from Senator Mark Kirk of Illinois, another closet case, <laughs> oh my God. not identified as what such, it, on the CBS News, who said, I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you were that he got caught. Right. <laughs> all right. Shall we move on? Uh, yes, I think that's all we have on Denny. Anyway, so uh, uh, there was also a moment when he was on C-SPAN when some caller called in and identified himself as Bruce and said, uh, Hi, Denny, I'm from Yorkville, Illinois. Ha, 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 and hung up. Yep. That was the high school. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Uh, we mourn the death of Bo Biden, 46, the former uh, attorney yes. general of Delaware. From our perspective, a staunch supporter of LGBT rights. He was working with Equality Delaware to win the marriage rights there in 2013. A great loss. Also worked on uh, transgender rights uh, very hard. So, yeah, very, very sad story and, and a big loss. Uh, good news from the Pentagon. You know, we got rid of uh, the don't ask, don't tell policy, but now they're set to update the military equal opportunity policy to include sexual orientation as it does race, color, religion, age, physical or mental disability, which I was sort of surprised to see, also protected, sex and national origin. So as of now, uh, service members have no recourse for sexual orientation discrimination outside of the chain of command, and it would add uh, sexual orientation to areas where the department seeks a culture of inclusion. But not gender identity, because well, even, though, even though the Pentagon has civilian workers who are transgender or transsexual, they do not want to be held to account for not allowing uh, transgender service members who right. are... Uh, so they they will not institute a gender identity non-discrimination policy yet. You, we've told you about the controversy about the New York uh, club owners uh, who Ian Reisner and Maddie Weider pass who had a uh, who had an event for Ted Cruz that they said was not a fundraiser. Well, the New York Times uncovered the fact that Ian made the maximum donation to Ted Cruz, then clawed it back. So he lied about it, and I think even his staunchest supporters have abandoned him, and we are boycotting their properties on Fire Island and in New York. His donation was a few days after the dinner for Ted Cruz. He says now that he gave him the $2,700 for his support of Israel after claiming he but made But took it no back because benefit. he doesn't support marriage equality. How could you not know that? Well, he didn't want the donation to be misconstrued <laughs> as support for an anti-marriage equality. Please, please, those yeah. are all lies. Now, meanwhile, Ian and Maddie have been sued by four former employees of their restaurants in the uh, nightclub in the uh, out hotel. Uh, the um, ex-employees claim that they were discriminated against for their sexual orientation. <laughs> amazingly, and uh, that they were also deprived of overtime pay they were owed and that tips were not distributed fairly. Uh, these are what we call bad actors. <laughs> Speaking of which, the preposterous Senator Lindsey Graham has yeah. officially announced his candidacy for President of the United States. Is this an advance when someone who is closeted can run no. for president? No. Or just an indication of it's how delusional he hu is. Hubris. Uh, speaking of South Carolina, the parents of an intersexed child there are suing because the hospital uh, removed the child's penis before he turned two. Uh, he was born with female and male organs, and the parents said it was unnecessary. Yeah, the hospital just did it on their own, so they're being sued for all. malpractice. Uh, he's now 10 years old and identifies as a boy, but uh, his penis has been removed. Uh, we had told you about uh, a murder back in, uh, uh, actually it was uh, 2013 in Virginia at Virginia Tech. Uh, Jessica Ewing, 24, killed her date, Samantha uh, Shrestha, uh, 21, when, it, when the date went wrong. And Shresma uh, said that she was just experimenting with her. So she was murdered. And uh, so uh, Jessica has been sentenced to 85 years in prison but, and must serve 45. And a trans woman in New York was uh, pushed onto the subway tracks by a man who was probably uh, disturbed. 
Uh, but it's being investigated as a possible hate crime. We don't have full details on that yet. And she West, was rescued. Yes. She's okay. She Good. was pulled off the tracks. And in the West Virginia case where a football player at uh, Marshall University uh, attacked uh, two uh, guys, two gay men on April 5th uh, who were kissing each other, uh, he has been indicted and charged with two felony counts of violating civil rights and two counts of battery. And they've also charged him with a hate crime, even though sexual orientation is not on the West Virginia hate crimes law based on sex discrimination hmm. in the act. Well, maybe that'll come in handy in Alabama where a House committee has killed a proposed sexual orientation and gender identity non-discrimination law. Uh, a uh, couple of stories from Colorado uh, that are interesting having to do with high school valedictorians. First, the bad story from Longmont, Cal Colorado. Uh, from a charter school uh, where a, the valedictorian, a young man, uh, Evan Young, 18 years old, 4.5 GPA. How do you have a 4.5? I thought there were only four points. You take extra credit. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Go I've ahead. always been amused by that. And has a scholarship to Rutgers, so he writes his valedictorian speech and he gives it to the principal for vetting. I think it's sad you have to give it to the principal for vetting, but that's me. Uh, so the principal knocked out a few things and said, oh, by the way, no, you cannot come out in this speech, as you, it says here. And, uh, and they forbid him to come out. Not, they, they told him this minutes before he was due to give the speech. And then they took away the honor from him. Wouldn't acknowledge him as the valedictorian at the event. Now, Evan, I want to speak to you. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to come out to your parents uh, in your valedictory speech. I think you tell the parents and then you keep it out of the draft of the speech and then you spring it on everybody at the ceremony. That's my advice to everybody thinking of, thinking of doing this. Yes, much better speech. And he was able to give the speech in the backyard with hundreds of people, politicians coming and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, the, uh, the bolder out uh, So it got a lot more attention than it would have. <laughs> And his parents are fine with him being because gay. Because if he had just said he was gay during the speech, nobody would have noticed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the charter school experience. Meanwhile, in a public school in Carbondale, Colorado, where I used to spend weekends in high school at a friend's house, uh, Emily Bruel came out in her valedictorian speech at Roaring Fork High School. Now, here's the deal with uh, Emily. She gave this wonderful speech about how she had sort of concentrated on her studies in high school rather than her social life. And she talked about labels and she said, I, so I put the label on myself, smart. And she, we have a picture of this. She held up this sign saying smart. And then she went on to talk more about uh, labels and coming to terms with who she was. And she flipped the sign over and said, and my other label is I'm gay. And everybody erupts in applause, standing ovation, big hit at uh, Roaring Fork High School. And the principal said he was thrilled and he was very happy for her, and they were very supportive at Roaring Fork High School of the valedictorian coming out. Tatum O'Neill does not like labels, more about which later. <laughs> uh, speaking of students, the Harvard class of 2015, 13% uh, identified as gay or bisexual or something else, I guess, within that range. 45% uh, they felt marginalized because of their sexual orientation while at Harvard. Imagine that. I do imagine that. All right, in Santa Ana, California, LGBT activists who are members of a group called Familia, Trans Queer Liberation Movement, are in, have been doing demonstrations about LGBT people, who, asylum seekers who are held in detention and are subject to deportation. In Santa Ana, it's the only LGBT-specific detention facility. And what strikes me about this picture is you see the trans flag, which is this blue and pink and white. Yes. And if you look at the facility behind it, the bands of the uh, facility almost look like they're kind of blue and pink and white. <laughs> I don't know. But they got themselves arrested, uh, and this is an ongoing campaign, and uh, LGBT uh, uh, detainees, asylum seekers, are subject to very high rates of sexual assault and overly confined to solitary just for being who they are in these deportation centers. These deportation centers, uh, the detention facilities, are just 
unbelievably medieval. Almost our entire prison system is. And a lot of them are privatized. And oh, the, yes. That's uh, why there are so many of them. And that's why the treatment is even worse. This is on us, Americans. We're allowing this to happen. Yes, exactly. Right. Well, at Seton Hall University, we told you that they fired the ca Catholic campus minister, Reverend Warren Hall, because he stood up for gay rights. Well, this week he acknowledged that he is gay. <laughs> that didn't come out in the original story. Exactly. And they're not happy about that either. As well, they say, as long as he's celibate. Yeah. Well, actually, n not having sex. Celibate just means not getting married. Another. Uh, but gays can do that too now uh, in New we're Jersey. Parsing uh, the vocabulary of yes. Catholicism. In uh, another protest in Menlo Park, California, where hundreds showed up to protest at Facebook headquarters because they say that uh, Facebook has sort of said it's okay for uh, people to not use their real names on Facebook, but meanwhile they're still letting anybody protest people who are not using their real names, and then they get kicked off Facebook, and and it's a whole big thing, and, and they think Facebook is still being mean to uh, people in drag who are performers or whatever. You want to run through some state legislation, maybe? Uh, well, in Illinois, the governor will, uh, will the governor sign the No Conversion Therapy for Minors bill, the updated Hate Crimes bill, and the uh, Correct Gender Identity for Funerals bill. They're all sitting on his desk Stay waiting. Tuned. Texas In Texas, 20 anti-gay bills died with the end of the session. Um, now, in, in a little town in Kentucky, Midway, uh, in horse country there, it's the eighth Kentucky city to pass anti-gay bias uh, legislation uh, by a four to two vote. This is a town of 1,656 people. Uh, and it's a and it's a it's a great bill. And one of our viewers, Scott Skidmore, who's the an out gay resident there, says we have a great little town there. <laughs> the here, only here, he said. the only footnote to that is that the biggest employer in town is Midway College, soon to be Midway University, a, a an institution of the Disciples of Christ, and they are exempted from this non discrimination but, well, law. Well, a lot of religious organizations get certain exemptions, but apparently, uh, you know, uh, one person testified against the bill and uh, that uh, they had a bus in protesters so nobody from the university came down because they're exempted oh, okay <laughs> well they could still be against it for everybody else whatever All in right. New York State the assembly for the eighth time has passed the gender identity and expression non-discrimination bill but uh, the state Senate not moving and the assembly is so far holding the line against this ridiculous tax credit bill for religious schools that uh, Governor Cuomo wants to get through with Cardinal Dolan there's a dust up in Pittsburgh that continues over their pride celebration. They booked Iggy Azalea, the uh, singer, Australian, to perform, but she's known for having made a number of racist and homophobic comments. So local organizations are pulling out of the event there because they're protesting her performance. She's, by the way, canceled her a uh, national tour, but she's still planning to perform in Pittsburgh. In Connecticut, the Senate passed a bill to make it easier for transgender people to obtain uh, birth certificates that accurately reflect their gender. The White House uh, issued President Obama's Pride Month proclamation. There's going to be a reception at the White House on June 24th. And they were also asked about Caitlyn Jenner, and uh, the White House spokesman said that uh, he thought Caitlin and that the president thought that Caitlin has shown tremendous courage in going through this in public and is worthy of respect. And there was one other thing I wanted to say about Caitlin. Oh, she uh, <laughs> she broke Obama's record in uh, the most Twitter followers, the fastest. Uh, and also, she is the subject of some controversy because ESPN has announced that she's going to get the uh, uh, Arthur, Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs. And people are now saying, but well, what about that guy in Dancing with the Stars with one arm? And uh, what about the woman who died, who raised a lot of money for something? So there is some backlash lash against uh, Caitlin. All right, so, some marriage news in the States? Uh, a couple, uh, uh, just another couple little things. Um, there's a new uh, thing out called Mapping LGBT Equality in America, a big uh, conglomeration of what the state of the law is all over the country. If you go to LGBTmap.com, 
www.sydneyabbott.org. You can find that. There will be a memorial service for Sydney Abbott, oh, author yes. of Sappho Was a Right on Woman, very important, at Judson Memorial Church here in New York. That'll be in our email each oh, week now. Uh, on Tuesday, June 16th at 2 p.m. Yeah, write to Andy Hum at AOL.com to get on the email. Yeah, and if you're on the email list, you would have gotten notice that we're, uh, when we do, do the show on free speech, that we're only on on Sundays for a couple of weeks. Because uh, they're in a pledge drive. And Elko, Nevada is having its pride parade on June 13th. It's first. Yes, right. marriage news. So North Carolina, the Republican governor vetoed the bill to let government, empl government employees opt out of same-sex marriages. He said, this is ridiculous. You swore an oath to the Constitution to do the do your jobs and uh, but the he was overridden by the uh, Senate. by the Senate uh, 32 to 16 and probably by the house yeah we're waiting to hear what the house does uh, and in Alabama the Senate has passed uh, something that says the state will not issue marriage licenses and you instead submit notice of a contract and and if the Supreme Court passes marriage for all, they think this will get them out of having to follow that. It's very muddled. I think they're dreaming. Well, they, they I, think, I think the whole point is a Supreme Court decision will institute let's see how equality. It, let's see how it plays out. Equal protection. So whatever law they you institute. You Yankees think you're pretty clever, <laughs> but you have, you know. <laughs> All right. All right. So far, we've had you Catholics and you Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> We're one for one. Uh, in, in Texas, uh, the, well, I said that a lot of bills died, but one of them was to prohibit gov in Texas to prohibit government officials from issuing licenses to gay couples. Thank goodness that died. Big business got very involved in Texas and helped kill all those bad bills, and that seems to be a key. Rick Santorum, uh, presidential candidate, says that he will continue to work against marriage for same-sex couples even if the Supreme Court says it's Good luck okay. With that. Nine people do not have the final word according to Rick. Well, I mean, the Congress does 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 do uh, things to law. As laws. he points out, we're still working against Roe v. Wade. You we're know. chipping away at that. Well, and we're going to continue to work against this. So Dred, you're warned. Dred, it's not over. Dred Scott was a pretty bad decision. Yes. Uh, in Hawaii, however, the high court there dismissed the final legal challenge, or at least the latest legal challenge, to the same-sex marriage law there. They said, you weren't harmed, you got no standing, go away. Uh, the Oneida tribe, I think in Wisconsin, has legalized same-sex marriage for tribe members. Right. But in Oklahoma, where same-sex marriage is legal, the Department of Corrections has decided that prisoners will no longer be allowed to engage in same-sex marriage until the Supreme Court says it's okay. This is completely illegal. Do we have some time for some banned video? Yes. Okay. Uh, WRCB in Chattanooga won't air this ad that we're going to show you about a gay Republican soldier who wants his right to marry, Jesse Ehrenfield. And uh, Freedom to Marry is, uh, did this ad and is running it on other Tennessee stations because Tennessee is one of the four states involved in the Supreme Court decision and they're sort of trying to prepare things in Tennessee for the decision in June. Can we run that? I'm Dr. Jesse Ehrenfeld. I'm a Republican, I'm a doctor, and I'm a soldier. As a military physician, I take care of other people's loved ones who are wounded in combat. But here at home, I'm fighting read, a different fight. You read because Hubble's I'm gay, I'm not allowed to marry my partner we... here in Tennessee where we live. I was able to stand up and put my life on the line for the freedoms that we all enjoy, and yet I don't have the freedom to marry my partner, Judd. Support the freedom to marry, because freedom means freedom for everyone. Including Republicans. Best guess, Supreme Court decision June 29th could be a little before that or I suppose a little after and in uh, Pulaski County Arkansas did we do this Wendell Griffin the uh, rejected the uh, the judge there rejected the dismissal of the suit to force the state to recognize same-sex marriages okay International news. In Australia, uh, pressure is growing for same-sex marriage. Various parties are introducing uh, same-sex marriage legalization bills, and now the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, says he may finally allow a conscience vote on same-sex marriage. Uh, Fifty corporations there took out a full-page newspaper ad to support But the same -sex Catholic marriage. Archbishop uh, developed a glossy brochure for, that it was given to every Catholic school kid in the country to take home to mommy and daddy to work together to write letters to the legislators and ask them to stop same-sex marriage. That, to me, 
is child abuse. How do you think gay kids feel about that? How do you think their parents feel? How do you think anybody who loves a gay person feels? That's he doesn't care because well, we are sinful and this is sinful and he doesn't oh. think we should uh, care that he's doing this. He's doing the right thing. Okay. Thousands, however, turned out in Sydney, Australia for a big marriage equality rally. And in Northern Ireland, 400 rallied for same-sex marriage. It's the only part of the United Kingdom that does not allow it. Uh, it was organized by a 17-year-old uh, kid, Padraigan Mervyn. Uh, um, and another rally is set for June 13th by the unions and gay and civil liberties groups. And meanwhile, the city council of Belfast passed a resolution supporting marriage equality. The legislature of Northern Ireland turned down marriage equality a couple of weeks ago. In but oh, go in, ahead. In Taipei. Uh, 3,000 uh, rallied at the fourth Pink Dot LGBT rally, which was originally started in Singapore. They're fighting for the freedom to love. That's what we're for now. In Costa Rica, a court for the first time has recognized a gay male couple as being in a common law marriage and has defined that as having all the same rights as uh, heterosexual legal marriage. So it is not a full legalization of same-sex marriage yet, but it seems well on its way. Uh, at the United Nations, the, um, the new UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is Jordanian Prince Hussein. Actually, High Commissioner for Refugees. Oh, sorry. I wrote that down wrong. I anyway, know. I had to double check it when he, I wrote it down. He called for all countries to protect same-sex couples and children. Yeah. Uh, and l lawyers in Andorra, the tiny European country, are promoting a public vote to change civil unions to marriage. They're, everybody's getting uh, excited by what happened in the Republic of Ireland. And so even though everyone acknowledges that a public vote on human rights is not necessarily anyone's first choice, uh, now they think we can win all this, so let's go ahead and do it. Good. So that's uh, so now even Andorra is talking Every, about doing that. Thank you, Ireland. Uh, South Korea, uh, they've had a pride march there since 1990 uh, when they had 50 people, and last year they had a lot. But Christian groups blocked the parade of 20,000. Uh, now police have rejected the LGBT permit and any kind of a demonstration by the Christian groups, and they're just like trying to call everything off. And this is an outrage. They're supposed to protect people who uh, want to exercise. I want let them exercise their First Amendment rights. Let us. Ex well, I don't know if they have a First Amendment in South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point. This is the first denial of a permit in 16 years. They fear the uh, evangelical counter protest. You know, the, it's the same excuse the New York City Police Department uh, yes. came up with about uh, the uh, St. Patrick's Day parade. The idea that these police forces will step out in public and say they fear uh, counter protests or uh, really? Handle you, it. you're you who've done nothing but brag about how you are the finest and the bravest and the strongest and the. No, it's just. It's an excuse. It's not a of reason. Of course, it's an excuse. But the idea that they would even uh, put this forward with a straight face. No, New York has, old, has been a tough town for tw for 25 years to do any kind of a protest in. Uh, yeah, uh, because they keep saying this, we can't control it. So 100 LGBT people camped out at the police station in Seoul, South Korea, to protest this lack of a permit. They, of course, haven't gotten it yet. But they will hold a, an LGBT pride festival on a big public plaza in Seoul. Not in Moscow. Uh, the, a group of 15 were detained after trying to hold a pride march. They unfurled a banner that said, make love not war. <laughs> well, that, of course, was interpreted by the Moscow police as uh, propaganda for uh, what is it, alternate sexual minorities, yeah. whatever they call it. And so they were arrested and there were protesters against the LGBT demonstrators who were also arrested. It was a it was a clash. It was an ugly clash. But continuing to, to try to pressure the German government to move to same sex marriage from civil partnerships. And the government has only agreed to add a few more rights in Iran. They the government is claiming to further protect uh, transgender and transsexual people. What this really means is that they are forcing gay 
gay people to transition. That is their way of uh, dealing with uh, the LGBT population. Nice to see that uh, the, you know the new push towards getting people to use HIV early is getting a lot of attention across the country to take drugs early uh, if you have been, if you have been infected with HIV, and that the needle uh, exchange policy of the United States is being challenged now much more. It's only thirty something years into the crisis, right? And in New York City, uh, there was <coughs> a protest at the closing for a couple of years of the health clinic in Chelsea, our neighborhood. The, uh, the epicenter of HIV in New York and the epicenter of the syphilis surge in New York. Yeah. So with now with up, no clinic. ACT UP is trying okay. to move the city to do something about it. All right. Uh, Jim Bailey died. Yeah. Uh, this was uh, an actor and singer famous for his impersonations of Judy Garland and Barbara Streisand. Uh, also took on stage roles as Betty Davis and uh, Tallulah Bankhead and was a Las Vegas favorite, but played all over the world, including Carnegie Hall and London Palladium. Uh, he was brought to prominence by Ed Sullivan in the 1970s. I saw him on the Ed Sullivan show many times. And he, and he once played Judy with Liza, <laughs> the real Liza. <laughs> well, he was a real singer and a real actor. Uh, he wasn't lip syncing. He was actually performing. And he didn't like being called a female impersonator. And as he pointed out, uh, when uh, Hal Holbrook plays Mark Twain, you don't call him a male impersonator. Uh, you call him an actor. And uh, Jim was uh, very prominent, very famous, big star at the time, and he was playing various characters. All right. Rest in peace. Yes. All right. Uh, we saw the uh, documentary about Larry Kramer, Larry Kramer in Love and Anger. We were at the uh, screening at HBO. Uh, Larry was there with Mark Ruffalo, who plays him in the HBO movie The Normal Heart, and uh, hopes he's going to play him in the sequel that Larry's writing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry's writing the, the second part of his book, that the, the first volume of which was 800 pages. He's doing and, a lot and, of writing. And this is, as he's about to celebrate his 80th birthday, they had a cake for him, because at the end of the month, he is having an 80th birthday. God, is he a survivor. Yeah, it's Sheila Nevins on the right who runs all the documentary I found the documentary. It, HBO. It, it bows on June 29th on HBO. I found it very affecting. I know it's not the whole story of AIDS or ACT UP or any of that not stuff. Not meant to be. But, it, but a lot is, of it is in there, and it's made by Gene Carlamusto uh, rather than some Hollywood type. Gene Carlamusto is a longtime lesbian filmmaker, act up activist, uh, and it's amazing that she got act up, uh, HBO to let her make this documentary about Larry and that they're going to air it. Well, you've heard of Sheila Evans, who heads the documentary unit over there, and she has fallen in love with Larry. <laughs> so she says. I'll right. bet she says that to all the guys. How about that Tatum O'Neill? <laughs> this is the Oscar winner as a child, now 51, divorced from John McEnroe. Uh, she says she has been dating women recently, but she won't say if she's bisexual or lesbian. I'm not one or the other. Uh, she she told likes people, women because they're gentle and more intelligent. Yeah. But this uh, this label thing, I mean, people have been saying that for years, but here's the new thing. You, you remember Maria Bello, the actress who, yes. uh, was, who revealed that she was dating a woman a while ago? Uh, she has a new book called I'm a Whatever. <laughs> it's, it's this whole thing of not labeling yourself, not being willing to say you're a lesbian or even bisexual. You're just... Whatever. And what's our friend Susan Sarandon? So I'm watching The View the other day because I must catch up with these things. <laughs> and sure enough, uh, news broke out. Susan Sarandon's on and they're asking her about her dating life because she just broke up with that younger guy. And she says, yes, yes, I'm in the market. I'll date anyone, uh, any age, any race, uh, any gender, in fact. And everybody goes, whoa, Susan Sarandon, you're open to dating a woman? She says, sure, you know, expands my possibilities. It's the old Woody Allen line. Uh, I'm not crazy about that line, but I was happy to see yes, that she... we like her. Yeah, she just wants to date someone who's happy and free. And we like J.K. Rowling, who tweeted after the Irish marriage win, Dumbledore and Gandalf can now get married. And the Westboro Baptist Church said that they would pick it, and Rowling tweeted, the sheer awesomeness of such a union in such a place would blow your tiny, bigoted minds out of your thick, sloping skulls. They don't mince words over there. 
She has well, a way with words, that JK. And speaking of whatevers and not mincing words, uh, The Bachelorette had a little shocker this week. It, this is a, a woman who's being courted by dozens of men. Well, two of the men purport to have fallen in love on The Bachelorette. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is something people have joked about for years. But in fact, there were these two guys sitting there and saying, you know, I think, uh, I think I'm attracted to you. And, uh, and no one can really figure out whether it's a joke or it's real or whatever, but it's certainly something new for The Bachelorette at ABC. So now people are talking more openly about, you know, there really should be a same-sex season of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. I saw something old and something new this week. I caught up with Skylight, the David Hare play. I don't have a picture of this, but it's it's Bill Nye and Carrie Mulligan, and I really wanted to see it, So, and they didn't give me a press ticket, so I paid 60 bucks and sat in the back row, <laughs> and it's a great play. And now uh, it's deductible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it's a very good night at the theater. That's, that's, that's all I'll say about that. It's not playing much longer, is no. it? No. Uh, but what, but, but off Broadway, what a cast in The Spoils by Jesse Eisenberg, starring Jesse Eisenberg. And there he, we have a picture of him with the whole cast. Two and a half hours of Jesse Eisenberg being crazy and obnoxious. Well, he's the one who played Mark Zuckerberg. As in, I was, uh, yes. Uh, sorry. In, in The Social Network. Yeah. But it's sort of Mark Zuckerberg without the success. That's the character. <laughs> oh, boy. So why the nice people around him, especially uh, Kunal uh, Nayar, who's from The Big Bang Theory, as his roommate, put up with him is a mystery. But it's all very well acted and sometimes quite funny. It's just a lot of cringeworthy craziness. Mm. The Spoils by Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> Well, I just uh, want to congratulate you again on your honor from the New York City Council, Thank the you. LGBT caucus, and at their annual Pride celebration. So I used my two minutes to give a speech to try to lobby four members of the caucus who were supporting this bill to, as a, to do a big giveaway to the anti-gay religious schools. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get any comments from them that I made any headway on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was proud of you, Thank and you, you were very strong in your speech. You, you were very forthright, Thank as opposed to people that. who get up there and are more mealy-mouthed and, well. uh, and don't have much of interest or importance to say. Well. You, you did make use of your time, and that was a good thing. And we, we make good use of our time on this show, I think, every week. Also, the uh, ceremony was hosted by George Takei, yes. who had to correct the pronunciation of his name by the city council speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. Yes. Because uh, people do call him Takai, but it's really Takei. Right. And uh, she's a great advocate, and he's a great advocate, mm -hmm. and uh, a good time was had by all. So it is June. It is Pride Month. Look, uh, Queen's Pride is this weekend, isn't it? It is. Yes. So Sunday. you might, might want to go to that. At in, noon. In Jackson Heights, Queens. Wonderful. And uh, others coming up on subsequent weekends. Brooklyn Check. has an evening Pride. There are Prides all over the place. What's the website that we use for this? Seasons of Pride. Seasons of Pride. Com. Com. Seasons of Pride com. You can find one in your area and you can have a great time. But uh, thanks for all the work you're doing out there, folks. We'll see you next week. Put us out of business.